Jimmy K here, Metal Voice. Look at this. The Metal Voice shirts are now on sale. Just go to the video description to find out on how you can purchase one. Metal! Hello, boys. Hey, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Welcome to the Metal Voice. Today on the show, yeah, who do we got, Alan? Oh, my gosh. It's been years we've been trying to get this dude, man. D. Snyder himself. Hey, guys. Hey. Great to finally be here on the Metal Voice. Oh, uh, I didn't realize yes. it's been years, but I hear that complaint from a lot of people. So, sorry. <laughs> sorry for the difficulty. I hope the... Uh, Catch is better than the chase. Yes. Hey, you know, this is a great time to do it because my ears are still bleeding. My computer's sweating here, listening to For the Love of Metal Live. It's, it, it, my computer's dripping with sweat here, July, listening to this album. July 31st on Napalm Records, For the Love of Metal Live. You got a, the solo album, you got some Twisted Sister there, and I believe there's a few other tracks, a new song all together right a brand new track yeah, that, yeah prove me wrong it's not it's not live it's studio track but yes. you know napalm you know in this day and age everybody's trying to figure out a way to sweeten the package to get people to actually buy the product and they asked if we had any outtakes from for the love of metal and we did not and i said but you know we can uh, write something and you know and record a record so I mean, prove me wrong is a, is, a, is a signal to people that this is D. Snyder's sound now. This is the direction I am in and staying in. It's very much in the vein of For the Love of Metal. And uh, that's, you know, anything you hear from me moving forward will be that heavy. Well, let's, let's start with, uh, you know, with For the Love of Metal, the album itself. It made our top 10 list. And to go back to your point, you know, is D angrier these days than he was back he in the angry. 80s with Twister Sister? Because, man, this is some aggressive stuff coming out of here. You know, it's it's uh, it's, really, it's actually a, a pretty good question. I'll tell you something that I've never told anybody except my wife. And she said, that's really screwed up when I said it. I mean, I am blessed. I, uh, I'm, I'm, I believe I'm happy. I have uh, success and, 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 and financial well-being and uh you know i've all the things that people dream of and i always dreamed of um yet anytime i look in the mirror i give the middle finger and i'm not sure if i'm giving the middle finger to myself or to the world in in the privacy of my own moment but i think i do have a have a, a well of anger within me that that i have many I, to be totally honest i feel that it always been very difficult for me to get things done. I've never, I've never been given, it's never, nothing I've ever done has ever come easy. And people say, oh, that must be so satisfying. It is, but damn, I would just like something to go easy <laughs> once in a freaking while. I like someone to just say yes and, and not have a freaking battle with every Everything I try to do. I mean, everything. So, uh, you know, uh, even my kids. <laughs> so, so, but yeah, so I think there is a well, a hidden well of anger still in there. And you're hearing it. When you say everything, you're the one constant there. It takes me back to your book. Shut up and give me the mic. I got it right here, by the way. You know, Thank you, what, is, it, is it D that's cursed or is, is D the cause? What's going on? My wife is a, um, my wife is very spiritual. Not in like the uh, traditional holy roller way. She's a little more, you know, hippie-ish, even though she doesn't look anything like a hippie. She went to uh, Peru uh, on some spiritual journey and walked into this place in the middle of the jungles. And she was like decked out in the, by the, in the eyes with Dior and all made, made up. And there was all these dirty hippies in there. And they thought she made a wrong turn on the Amazon. You know, so she's, she's definitely, she, and as a person, she's like, look, you don't got to like, not be a woman to be spiritual. Anyway, the point is, she she says we are all sent here with on a journey. She says, and this is yours. Your journey here is to you're going to you're going to get what you want. You'll achieve your dreams, but you're going to have to fight and scrape every inch of the way. I said, great. And she <laughs> says, the good news is you get to come back and do it again in a different way. I said, oh, even better, even better. D, D, you've retired, and now you're, like, stronger than ever. I mean, I can't even believe this album is so great. It's, 
you've taken the Twisted Sister songs and you've revamped them and they sound better than ever, actually, oh. Alan. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, well, you know, thanks for appreciating that. You know, you guys know, true fans know, that Twisted was a metal band before we became recognized as this, you know, anthem, pop, metal, hair. I, well, we were there in the trenches in Europe touring with Motorhead and Saxon and Maiden. It was no hair metal. There wasn't even anybody else wearing makeup. I mean, we were, we were doing it since the 19, mid-70s after Kiss took theirs off. So, I mean, you know, we... So the fact was we were a metal band, but I certainly had these, you know, love the, the ACDC, the Slade kind of anthemic rock songs, and we wrote some obviously powerful ones. But we, but in our heart, we were a metal band, especially in my heart. And on this album, I try to really show that, first of all, with the exception of I Want to Rock When I Could Take It, I focused on songs like Under the Blade, Burn, Burn in Hell, Fire Still Burns, the really metallic twisted songs and my guys you know they're from bands like toxic holocaust when they detune and start adding a little more dick, 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 <laughs> all this you know uh, the the true i mean they were metal songs but they even more metallicized yeah. uh yeah. after my new band la lays into them so and i really wanted to connect the dots there with this with this live record and show people here's what i'm doing today this is what i was doing then and they're not so far removed even hearing a song from from Widowmaker in there, yes, ready yeah. to fall, yeah. which fits perfectly in, you know, that was a very metallic band. And uh, thank you, Stand By For Pain. And, um, <laughs> you know, that was a very metallic band and, and it fits perfectly in the set. And, and, and you know, you, you did all the writing, right? You you would love to have more input from the guys at Twisted Sister, but you were the main writer. And it's almost as, like Jim was saying, you're doing all the writing, but it's like part, part A of your, your career and part B because it's so, so heavy now. Well, with, you know, Twisted, I, you know, uh, Twisted was a glitter band. They formed in 1973, which people are just starting to get aware of through the documentary that's out there. And um, that's 73. That's the uh, Alice Cooper days, Bowie days, T-Rex, New York Dolls. And that was their inspiration. I joined in 76. That glitter era was over and metal was starting to come become a thing. And I loved glitter rock, but I also loved metal. So when I joined, I brought in my love for both those things, and that became sort of the Twisted Sister, what became to find this hair metal sound. But at my core, at my heart, I'm a metalhead. I've always been. I'm day one. I'm day one black, first Black Sabbath album, day one first Grand <laughs> Funk album, day one first Zeppelin album, day one Blue Cheer, day one. I am like, I was there when at the ugly breach birth of heavy metal and the death of the Woodstock nation. And I helped swing a sledgehammer to destroy it. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Who the freak cares about Crosby, Stills and Nash? For God's sakes. <laughs> you know, you know, what's interesting. I was thinking about this last night as I lay in bed. Um, Oh my God! <laughs> we're not going there. We're not going there. What are you doing? Like really, I didn't know it was this kind of show. I'm cool. Not there's anything wrong with it, guys. I just, you know, it wasn't I, in my I notes. I was thinking, you know, back in the '80s, me and Alan, you know, we were fans, and there you are at the PRMC, you know, trying to sort of stop censorship. And today's world, I think we've actually have censorship. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't. I mean, it's changed. It got better, but then in a way, it got worse. I, I don't know if it's for the better or for the worse. Oh, well, you're absolutely right. First of all, it's more subversive, you know. Um, you know, when it's out, it, it just it's, we thought felt like we were winning in some way, but it just went more underground. It's still there, the manipulation of what we see and what we hear, uh, the PC nation. You know, my I, I'm in, into filmmaking now, and my, me and my filmmaking friends often talk about the fact that a movie like Blazing Saddles could yeah. not be made today. That's right. That's Literally, right. could not be made because it offends would offend too many people and i remember seeing that movie uh, the first time in a theater full of african-americans in a black neighborhood a black theater me and my friend were the only two white people and i was laughing my ass off and my friend was said stop laughing we're gonna get our asses kicked 
And I looked around at the theater and everybody was laughing. You know, everybody, I said, everybody's laughing. It's funny, funny is funny. But now, you know, it's, it's, and it's odd, the conservatism was ultra right back in the 80s. Now it's shifted sort of to the left where you've got the, with the liberals saying, oh, you can't say that, you can't say that, you can't say that. So yeah, it's still around, it's still an issue. Um, and, uh, you know, but we've just got to continue to push back and fight. Okay. Let's, well, let's get back to the, the album here. I mean, you know, you, you're at Bloodstock, okay? you got your musicians now. You were an opening act? What was that about an opening act? I hate to follow Dee Snyder. I like the bathroom bit. Like, hey, we're going to play a new song. Don't go to the bathroom. Yeah, well, that's just because I, 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 I remember seeing, and this is the truth, um, this is true, Led Zeppelin, Madison Square Garden, physical graffiti tour. The album had just come out, and they went and said, this one's off the, oh, this one's off the new record. It's called Cashmere. Dude, half the arena yeah. left. <laughs> half. Because they were like, oh, it's a new song. Cashmere. They walked out. But it wasn't like Cashmere yet. It was a new song. And anytime you hear, as I said in the live album, it's like, I can tell you, if you have a problem with, with going to the bathroom, Yes, all you gotta do is play this words. Here's one from the new album yeah. over and over. You'll be work. running for the for that crapper, you know. <laughs> so, but I mean, uh, you know. And by the way, I just want to say that this is a you, you listen to the CD and you, the the interstitial stuff, the rapping and stuff is taken almost all from Bloodstock. The album itself is a com and the live DVD yeah, is a combination of stuff. nine different shows from all over the world. Wow. And we wow. it, it's and. If when you watch the DVD, it cuts from day to night, Europe to South America, sun to rain in the in one line of the song, one line. Yeah. It's constantly cutting. And I and I at first you say, well, does that work? It does. And what I what I was wanted to show was that the connection metal is for the community, for the family, how it resonates in Brazil, and it resonates in England, and it resonates in Australia, it resonates in Canada, it resonates, you know, I mean, everywhere we are connected through this music, we are one. We really are one. And, and, I, and I wanted to show that just by showing every audience just enjoying the moment together, you know? it's a, The metal family is an amazing one, for sure. Plus it's like a documentary, right? There's like bits of, uh, you know, I guess from the PRMC days, at least what, I, what, I, what I've been reading about it, correct? Yeah, well, there's, uh, I did this thing called uh, Spoken and Shouted in um, in Australia. It was an odd, I had an idea to do a live concert day one and do a spoken word day two in the same town. And a spoken word was a smaller crowd, you know, a few hundred people. But it was interesting, but a lot came out of it because here I am in the middle of touring the album. And, ref and so a lot of the interviews sort of reflected on where I'd been and where, how I got to where I was today. And we found that it made for interesting cutaways during the uh, live footage to break from the, you know, the traditional concert footage and go to this interview segment and reflect a little bit on what people are seeing and hearing from Dee Snyder in 20, well, that's 2019. Yeah. Is, is stand-up comedy next? Because the, the banter <laughs> in between the songs, <laughs> you should be on stage somewhere. You are I, actually. You know, yeah, well, uh, you know, to me, yeah, uh, I, I enjoy entertaining the audience. And people, you know, have said that, you know, I remember reading a review and it said, Dee Snyder's show is an, an emotional roller coaster. Um, they said, we, we, there's anger, you, you're, and, and then there's, there's, there's joy, and it says, and there's laughter. And at the time, this reviewer was, I, I, I was dealing with my mother, uh, the passing of my mother and I came and did this show because I said these are the times when we need metal the most when we're hurting this is when we need to this metal is always that that form of release for all of us yeah. you know people say it's a fact that metal heads are grow up to be better adjusted adults and psychology today interviewed me and asked me why and I said because we get it out yeah. we express the frustration and the anger and the the heartbreak and the sorrow and the all those 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 very powerful emotions need to go somewhere and we go to a show we scream we yell we shout we mosh we thrash and then we go home sweaty and happy yeah. and and so you know so i try to 
as a front man, and that's what I am, try to bring all those experiences. And my wife always said my her favorite parts of the show is when I stop playing and talk to the crowd. So, <laughs> and I guess that's why I'm in radio now. So, yeah. Uh, just to add to that, D, I mean, the safest place you can ever be if you're with true fans is at a heavy metal concert. I mean, the most violent concerts I've been were actually like jazz and blues concerts, you know, <laughs> where people have been drinking all day. But you know, true well, heavy I, metal fans, it's a brotherhood, like you said. So many people who go to festivals or go to shows I, who aren't metal fans or get to, you know dragged along, they're always like amazed. I couldn't believe everybody was it was so great. It was a, it was such everybody was having a good time. I'm like you know this is the old judge a book by its cover, misreading the room. You know, um, I, you know I've always said I'm the, now don't worry about the metal fans. We get it out. I worry about the pent up suits and people who are just you know just so uptight they're the ones who turn out to be axe murderers i really got to ask this before it's all done i mean here you are re-releasing re or restarting your career in a sense with so much anger and power and and such great music and then twist of sisters retiring i mean it's sort of like sh should you have continued with Twisted Sister or is that over or I, I think you could probably make the best music of your career with Twisted Sister right now well you know that's a that's an interesting thing um I don't okay and we could go a little bit longer guys I, okay. you know, they, they give me they give me a break in between and okay all right, all right. I mean it's right. too, but uh, we can roll for a little bit more um I love Twisted, and you know, and then my brothers, and uh, and we're still, you know, talk to each other, and we're still friends, and that was one of the great things about reunite reuniting was to fix that those relationships, and and because we did we fought so hard and so long together to end on the note we ended in '87, we should you know Twisted Sister came in like a lion and and disappeared, and people like some people didn't even know we broke up, but what you broke it was like you know we went out with a whimper. And uh, didn't want that to be the last thing. So Twisted reunited after 15 years. We were together, reunited longer than we were together the first time, which was an amazing thing. Um, but there's limitations when you're with a band like Twisted Sister, where people want to define you by what you did and who you are. And I still suffer through those same limitations, but I'm a little bit freer to to walk, to do something different. And and having done something finally that connected with the my audience, the metal audience, with younger fans as well, it was amazing, the response to For Love of Metal. This is what everybody who goes solo, what, whatever instrument they play, dreams about. You have this legacy band you're from, but you'd like to show that you, standing on your own two feet, are capable of being something of doing something and uh, you know look at robert plant he's uh, he's a friend he's been trying for decades honey drippers and this and that he you know and he, he puts out all these different records all in hope that people will say Rob, remember robert plant before they're not overpowering Led Zeppelin, but still that he stands on his own keeps trying it's the dream that everybody hopes for the only okay. person i know who really did it well a few people have done uh, but Ozzy did it in the biggest yeah. way. Yeah. Ozzy left Sabbath, came yeah. out, and now it's two hours plus of Ozzy Osbourne, paranoid and goodnight. Is a tip of the hat to the old days. He stands on his own. Glenn Danzig did it, coming out of the misfits. You know, I mean, it's it's a, such a difficult thing to achieve. And I've started to actually, I finally put like sort of a flag down and said, this is ding. And people going, yeah, we dig this. So I'm going to be hard pressed to not move forward as D. Snyder and try to continue to be me separate from Twisted Sister and continue to give people music that's D. Snyder music. Yeah. And for myself, what really turned me on to Twisted Sister back in the day was the voice. And you, the voice is, how do you do it? All these years later, I mean, it's incredible how strong and powerful your voice is on this uh, on this live album. Thank you, and that's one of the things that Josta, you know, when he challenged me to do this record, Jamie said your voice is as strong as ever. I mean, opera singers don't start singing until they're in their thirties. That's a fact. 
That's when they start their careers because their voices haven't matured. And I think I benefited, you know, I've had a throat surgery. I've certainly abused my voice, but skipping the alcohol, skipping the drugs, you know, living a healthier lifestyle, you know, um, I think it's allowed me physical and, and vocal longevity. Although that said, I've had knee surgery, I've had shoulder surgery, I've had throat <laughs> surgery, you know, I'm becoming the bionic, bionic front man. So uh, I don't know if I want to keep going until everything's titanium, you know. Uh, so uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, you know, that's that's the thing is, that's the odd thing is I sit here going, okay, you're, you're kicking the second, you know, wave of your career in at 65? You know, it's like, really? Crazy. Now? You know what? You know. So, in the meantime, I, I'm, I'm going to be directing my first feature film. I've just been asked to write and direct another movie. So, I'm also I finished my first novel, uh, which is out at, at publishers now, a fictional novel. So, I'm also exploring new, you know, new ways of expressing myself. And um, so, I don't know how I'm going to fit it all in, but I'll try. Well, I, I'm here. Look, I got my little collection. You you never really stop. Here, I got a Van Van Helsing CD. Van Helsing's curse, I've baby. Got, uh... I've, tried, I've taken many swings at the solo thing. Yeah. I certainly have Desperado, SMFs Live, uh, SMFs, I mean. Uh, yeah, and and none of them really connected. You know, anytime I, you know, I just couldn't get them to really connect until For the Love of Metal. Went to the top of the Billboard charts. It was on the top of all the metal charts. You know, to go out on stage and you see it in the, you hear it on the live album, you see it in the concert. I, if I, if I had tear ducts, I would have gotten choked up because to have people singing and excited about new music from Dee Snider was something I've been struggling to achieve for over 30 years since I left the band. And um, finally, people, something was resonating. So, uh, you know, so I feel blessed in that way. What genre are you going to be writing your movie script in? Is it horror? Um, Is it a psychological yeah, thriller? Yeah. I, I'm a horror guy, even though I'm capable of more. My novel is a fictional novel, period piece from the 70s. Nothing to do with rock and roll, nothing to do with horror. Uh, and, um, you know, I'm hoping that uh, people read it and go, holy crap, this guy is, you know, is, is, is capable of things beyond you know, rock and roll and horror, heavy metal and horror. But yeah, but I'm a horror junkie. Uh, for, uh, My Enemy's Enemy, which is the one I'm going to be directing first, I wrote. Very disturbing movie, uh, you know, and uh, powerfully disturbing. Uh, and then, then after that, I've been asked to uh, rewrite, reimagine a classic 80s horror film. I can't say which one, uh, which I'm working on right now, and direct that one as well, uh, slasher film from the, from the mid-80s. Um, so, uh, you know, and, and I think the producers I'm involved with are, you know, they're saying, oh, we found a new Rob Zombie, you know, uh, ah. the guy's a rocker. And everybody wants to sort of like, everybody just wants to like pigeonhole you. But, you know, if you're lucky enough to get a pigeonhole to be in, you know, you, you got to view it as a blessing. People fight their whole lives hoping that somebody will recognize them for something. So <laughs> the fact that I'm, you know, recognized for, my, for metal and recognized for horror, now, uh, you know, I, I got that. In time, I know I could do a lot more than this. And that's why I like writing, because it's so freeing for me. I, as I write characters, I'm, I could be anybody. I could be anything in any, in any place at any time. Yeah, yeah. Alan? I just, I just want to shout out uh, here. If anybody can get their hands, here's a cassette. That's how back th this goes. The Widowmaker's Blood and Bullets. What a <laughs> phenomenal album. If anybody can find this, I hear was it's, Clive, it's just, what, what, what album was Clive Burr on? Clive was on Desperado. Desperado, the late that Bernie was it. Gourmet yeah. and the late Clive Burr were on Desperado, uh, a swing and a miss. You know, well, I mean, we were the record was shelled before it even came out. Widowmaker, um, that first record, Blood Bullets. Um, well, are you, where, where are you guys? You, Montreal. Montreal. Canada. Are you Canadian? Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay, your, your, your accent's the dead giveaway. Um, <laughs> we sound like you. <laughs> I forgot it was Esquire Records. That was a buddy of mine set that company up funneling money out of Canada through some <laughs> through some through some I don't some sort of stock scheme was going on. We were actually with Blood and Bullets getting some 
some legs. We got the crust crested, fifty thousand copies. We're like, oh my god, we were the only rec- we were the only band on the label. It was this little back room down on Long Island, and this Canadian guy was pulling money out of Canada. And the and the and the Royal Mounties came in and arrested the guy, locked up the building, and shut the company down. So that record is like gone, wiped off the face of the earth because some Canadian guy was well. I I loved him for trying to help my career, but he was doing something very shifty and illegal. Must have been so, Montreal. Uh, Must have been so, Montreal. So uh, I don't know any. So I'm. We're trying to actually. And then the second album was on CMC. Yeah, and, yeah. and and on the middle of the tour, Joey Franco uh, slammed his finger. Well, actually, my guitar player, Al Petrelli, slammed Franco's finger in the door and broke his finger in the middle. And the tour was called. And that was just like a death knell for Widowmaker. So right now we're working on trying to release the two albums in some sort of package, you know, oh, great. A, mis- a missing link package, uh, you know, a, t- a box set or something. Right. So uh, we'll All see right. about that. All right. Guys, it was a pleasure talking to hey, you. thanks, D. D. Snyder thanks. for the love of Metal Live, July 31st. A must. Yeah. A the must. album, the DVD, and uh, people think I'm a, a prophet because this, uh, the last thing I'll tell you. So spring 2019, I announced to my management, I'm taking off 2020 from live performing. And they were like, What? We just got things going again with the love of metal. I said, listen, I'm taking off. I'm focusing on, I want to write a novel. I'm writing some screenplays. I'm taking a break. I didn't know the entire entertainment industry was taking <laughs> a break. <laughs> We're not a you, prophecy. And I wanted to that. write all I, all I can do is write. I sit in the house day in and day of writing, <laughs> writing. You be careful what you wish for. And then they said, well, what are we going to do for 2020? I said, well, Let's film some of the shows and put out a live album as like a placeholder. And and what a, could there be a better time yeah. for a live yeah. album to come out at a time where people are starved for live entertainment? So get the DVD, Blu-ray, put it on your big screen TV, get your friends, social distance, wear your masks, get a beer and rock out with your, you know, what's out to D Snyder live for the love of metal live. Uh, and, and in July, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll be back in business again in 2021. All right, D. Yeah, thank uh, you so thank much. Thank you, D. It was Pleasure, a great guys. That brings me right up to my next interview. <laughs> Take care. Thank Take you. Care. Bye. Bye. Bye.